Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a reel I haven't worked on before. This one is a damn quick 700B Champion made in West Germany. And the interesting thing about that is that helps us to date the reel, well, within certain reason anyway. West Germany um, was formed after World War II and it was unified again in October of 1990. So this reel was made somewhere between the late 40s and the 1990s. I'm going to guess the 1980s uh, for uh, based on the style and the like. It looks very much like a Daiwa Millionaire or a Abu Garcia um, ambassador type of a reel. And uh, we're going to take it apart and service this one for Robert. He sent it in to me. And uh, let's see what uh, what we got. I didn't spend the time to go looking at uh, looking for the schematic. I imagine it's out there somewhere. And if I need it, if I get into trouble, well, I'll go do that. But one of the things I do to avoid trouble is that I look for the opportunity to take pictures. And I'm taking pictures here with my video camera. It'll show me the critical points at which I remove pieces and parts. And if I get stuck on the reassembly, well, I can just go back and, and take another look at the, uh, the video, just kind of rewind it, and that will help me to uh, place them in the proper perspective. So you don't have to take videos, but I do recommend that you do take the opportunity to take a picture along the way at critical points. Use your cell phone camera. Use a, uh, well, you can do a video if you like. Use a, you know, a digital camera. Use anything that, that kind of makes sense to you. And uh, that'll help you if you do get stuck. Well, this one has a screw that's holding the gear shaft or the gear sleeve to the bridge shaft. That's very similar to a uh, an Abu reel, the early Abu reels. In fact, I was just working on one the other day where we had to replace that bridge because the, the bridge post had broken off on the Abu. And we were fortunate enough to find the uh, replacement bridge. With that screw removed, we can remove the handle. It seems like the uh, the handle is aluminum, and we have a little tension washer that goes under the handle. And then the next step would be to remove your star adjuster, and the star adjustment comes in a counterclockwise manner for removal. And this one's kind of hard to mess up, putting it back in, because well, you have a cup and a uh, pressure below that, but sometimes I've seen those things going upside down. Then it looks like we have some kind of a spring in the assembly there. Well, let's see if we can take it off at this point. Sometimes you have to remove those two screws to remove the, uh, the piece from a reel. Sometimes you don't. In this case, we don't. I'm noticing that there probably was brakes on this reel that have uh, kind of gone away. That's all right. You don't need the brakes. I get that question quite a bit. Let's take the spool out too while we're at it, if we can. I'm going to re un remove this side. There seems to be a little tension washer on there. Hmm. All right, well, we're probably learning something with that. I believe to remove the spool, this side is narrower than the other, and we have to take that side plate out. So for now, we're just going to Go ahead and put that back. We'll come back and service that other side plate, but I don't think you can pull that spool through this side. All right, two screws here. We're going to enable us to get to the main drive assembly in this reel. And while we're doing this, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. To those of you that have subscribed, thank you very much for all it is that uh, you've done to support my channel. I appreciate uh, you watching these. I enjoy your comments, and I uh, certainly enjoy the dialogue that we've had from time to time uh, about fishing reels and service and the like, and hearing some of your personal stories about what the reels mean to you and so on. So if you subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way you'll see the reels that I'm working on. It may be one of your favorites, or maybe a reel that you don't know that you want to learn a little bit about, or maybe a reel that you have no interest in, and you can kind of skip it, right? But uh, hit that notification button, you'll see what we're doing all the time. Appreciate, uh, again, your support. To remove the cover, simply grab it on the side and pull it up. And this is your cover. We've got some dried grease in there, so we'll take care of that right away. I'm going to use a penetrating oil as a cleaner. I don't recommend using penetrating oils as lubricants. 
but they are good for degreasing. And I'm going to use a light steel wall just to come on over here and uh, buff this up. Well, interestingly enough, I'm looking on the inside of this, and this design is very similar to the early uh, Abu Garcia ambassadors. I'm not saying that it's been modified from it. I'm not saying that it is an ambassador. And I'm just kind of looking at the way that the yoke assembly in that uh, is going. And that kind of reminds me of the early 5000s in the uh, Abu line. I don't know if there's a link there. This one's made in Germany or West Germany as opposed to Germany. And uh, I always try to find hints when I'm looking at these reels. Just always trying to learn some more. All right, well, I've cleaned the case up pretty good. There was a ball bearing that just came out here. That ball bearing belongs there. I'm sure that that's going to be a nice casting feature of this. So I'm going to keep that ball bearing in the cup for now. We're going to take that off to the side. All right, so we've removed that. This whole gear sleeve should come up. And we have a forked anti-reverse dog here. And that means that one side of that fork is going to go on each side of this toothed plate here. And when you reel forward, it releases. You'll watch this will bang against the back here. And then when you go to tighten, it's going to pull it in. Did you see that? Release, tighten. Release, tighten. You'll see that dog going up and down. And that's kind of traditional of these types of reels. The main gear is off. Here's the click piece now. And we can remove both the click piece and that shaft. And you'll see better how those wings or those tines of that fork go on each side of that click ratchet. All right, I wanted to do that because I want to get the old grease from underneath. I'll take care of that. It's going to slow the reel down if you don't, uh, don't get rid of that stuff. I'll use a Q-tip for that. And so much of real servicing is just about cleaning it up and uh, re-greasing, re-oiling, checking for broken pieces and parts, and uh, making sure it gets lubed and is clean for the next go-round. So uh, it's not, uh, not rocket science like they say, but you, need a, you don't need a lot of mechanical ability. What you need to do is just have an organized plan, and hopefully the, the way that I show you to do these is kind of that way. It's an organizational thing. All right, we, uh, we can inspect the, I'm going to get this pinion gear out of here. If you push down on the trip lever, you will get the pinion gear out. I'm going to inspect the pinion gear now. I want to make sure that these teeth are in good condition. If they weren't in good condition, you'd have to replace the part. And gosh, my guess is, like I said, uh, German reunification was 1990. We're in 2022 now, so that's 32 years ago. And uh, I would say parts for this one are probably hard to come by if it was even made in 1990. And again, my guess would be the 80s. I'm sure there's folks out there are going to let me know. There's a great uh, audience that we have that uh, knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. With the yoke we installed now, we can go ahead and, and we wanted to just check and examine. Now, this is another one, interestingly enough, kind of looks like the Abu. It's not exactly, but the way it seats there. We have three trip levers, the Abu doesn't. And we're going to just do a uh, quick uh, lubrication on the post. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reset this dog. I took the dog off to check it. You're going to reset the dog so that the beak goes into the slot like that. And then we're going to remember that it went around this post here. So when we go to load the, the assembly in, let's go over the post and aim that hole for the stud, the hole in the dog for the stud, just like that. And then just like before, we can test this. You can spin that. Well, you'll see that the dog kicks out tighten and the dog kicks in. So that's set properly. Just clean off the stuff in the back of the main gear. You might uh, have some stubbornness. So I use a four row steel wool when I get something like that. That helps me to buff it. 
Let's take a look at the washer underneath. Typically these were leather washers. This is a hard washer. Okay, so the hard washers don't get any kind of lubrication to them. Just need to make sure that they're not chipped or cracked. And put that cap washer back in, put the whole assembly back on. And uh, now we can just kind of cover up the side plate here and go over to the other side of the reel. But that's it. That's the side plate, how it should look. Your dog's installed. The pinch of the fork is on that uh, one side each on that click lever. Here's your main gear. We'll put some grease on that. We've cleaned the entire bridge plate off. We've lubricated your um, pinion gear. All right. So put a little bit of grease onto the teeth of the main gear. If I noticed anything with the reel, it was just that it was tight, and tight to me usually means lack of lubrication. So that's where uh, I think this reel will improve in performance pretty nicely because of that. All right, that's that piece. Now we'll go ahead and clean the back of this. Let's go ahead and put that back on. Center those two holes, and then we can get the two. screws back in on this one. If you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you'd like to see a reel done that maybe you haven't seen in my catalog, uh, if you are working on a reel and maybe you're stuck on some aspect of it, you know, it all, they all don't come out this way where you just open it up and you kind of have good insight into the reel. Sometimes you open it up and a spring flies or something. If you have a question like that, just leave it in the comment section. I will be Happy to try and uh, answer those questions for you. Okay, the two mounting pieces are on now. Let me clean up a little bit of the dirt there. Remember what we said? We had a burring that came out of this cap here, so let's put that burring back in. Let's oil it first. Now we can seat that burring. Now we, there's a little bit of an adjuster cap here, just like a uh, ambassador. Uh, that's a tensioner, so we'll put that back in. We have the washer which goes over the post and then we have the spring. And now we can put that star adjuster on. And when you're doing this, please make sure that you're going on square with that star adjuster. If you don't have the ability to turn it free and easy like this, well then something's probably cross stripping. And if it's cross stripping, you're going to have a lot of trouble if you uh, continue to push that. So to continue on that side, then we have that little tension washer. We have the handle. We have that screw that's going to hold the gear sleeve to the bridge shaft. That goes in the middle there. We'll tighten that down. And then we have our nut cap to finish that off. That's a 10 millimeter nut cap. And again, just tighten them down. When you're tightening this down, make sure that you tighten your drag star down before you finish tightening that cap. Sometimes you're going to trap the handle with that star adjuster. You think you're tight, and then you go to tighten your, uh, your drag while you're fishing, and the next thing you know, your handle's flopping all over the place. So make sure you do that uh, tightening it down. And we got a little bit of um, varnished oil on the back of this. I'm just going to take a moment to clean that out. Then I'm going to reinstall the side plate. We'll check this side out first and then we'll come back and we'll do the other side. As I mentioned, I think that the way that this is set up, you cannot pull the spool out from this side. It looks like there's a difference in the circumference of the uh, side plate access points. So my guess is you can't do that. And uh, as a result, we'll go over to the other side and make sure that we take care of that. If you have a reel like Robert and you're interested in having it serviced, if you don't want to do it yourself, uh, contact me by email on the business card that follows and uh, I'll be happy to provide you that information. 
All I can say is, wow, this reel is so much smoother than when we started and all we did was clean and re-grease. We haven't even got to the other side yet. Look at that. Beautiful reel. And let's make sure that our free spools, free spools, it does. Let's make sure we click back up. We do. All right, let's go over to the other side then. We'll take this off, give this a little bit of a cleaning. We'll make sure that we oil that pole and the uh, line guide. And uh, this will be ready to go back to Robert to uh, enjoy fishing with. Now this one has a side plate tensioner on this side, I'm noticing. And I'm not quite sure if that's magnetic or not. I'm sure when we open up the case we'll find that out. I'm taking these three screws and I'm putting them on my table first to make sure that they're all the same size. If they're not the same size, I want to note that. Okay, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I've removed the spool. I'm just going to clean up while I have it. I'm going to use a little bit of Foro steel wool. We want to take the dirt and debris off the back of this. Just like we cleaned the other side of the case. I'm going to use penetrating oil for that. Now we have an idler gear. This is the one that drives the level wind feature. You want to inspect all of the teeth on it. I didn't notice any problems with the level wind and I'm not seeing any issues with the teeth. So we will go ahead and uh, and I just get a little bit of grease onto the one where the spool is. You don't need to grease these. These are petroleum products. By their nature, they're kind of self-lubricating. And then we're going to put a little bit onto the post here. And we can reinstall that. We have a burring in the side plate here, so let's go ahead and oil that. And then while we're at it, I always find it's kind of easier to do the, uh, the paw when the spool is out and the cover is off. So let's go ahead and take that pole cap off. And we'll just give it a shot of oil in there. It's been working fine. Oil up the worm gear. You can reinstall the cap. All right. That's the we'll be able to turn again to make sure that it's all working nice and easily. It certainly is. Look at that. That's beautiful. All right. We're going to take that spool then, which I guess we found out can only come in the one way. We have a little bit of a spool gear attached to this. We're going to make sure that we put a little grease on that. That's going to drive the uh, worm gear. And when metal comes up against plastic, I generally like to uh, put a little bit on there. Again, we, we noticed we are missing those brakes. Here's a little trick. If you need the brakes, use a squirt tube from a uh, um, spray can. That one's fitting just about right. So I think what I'll do is I'll make him some brakes here. And uh, Bob, if, uh, or Robert, if you uh, don't like these, take them out. All you need to do is clip them with a scissor. Trying to get them about the right size. These are uh, meant to uh, make an even transition on the casting. Kind of break it down slowly. To get them to be efficient, you want them uh, or effective, bring them out there. If you don't want them, push them in. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'll set these in. And uh, Robert, if you want to use these, then uh, pull them out. <laughs> Just make sure when you go to fish this reel, that you uh, uh, pull these out so that they're effective. And when you go to reset this, right here, this is the rim brake that it's going to be on. Make sure that you don't... You know, some days you just don't have a lot of luck. My battery pack just ran out, so I apologize if we're uh, repeating here. But keep those brakes in if you don't want to use them. If you want to use them, pull them out. All right, I'm going to reload. Whoops, let's put a little bit of grease onto the, the shaft of the spool here. I'm using pen precision real grease for this. I get that question a lot. I really don't care which greases you use, but please make sure that they are fishing real greases. All right, we'll take the side plate assembly now. We'll go load that on. Okay, so my battery pack ran out, and uh, I guess we're having a little bit of performance issues with the camera. Let's go ahead and put the rest of the side plate on. Tighten down these three side plate screws. We know that we know they're the same, so they're going to go in either direction. Doesn't matter.
Okay, the gloves are off. Time to take it for a final test. We have the Champion Damn Quick 700B bait casting reel. Nice smooth operator. Make sure we have the free spool tripping, making sure that it kicks back in. Drag washer, nice and tight. That's it. That's the, uh, the reel that was made before 1990, or at least October of 1990. And uh, overall, nice little reel to go take fishing. So Robert, I hope you enjoyed fishing with this one. Thank you for sending it in. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. If you're a first responder, thank you for all that you do. And um, wishing everybody the best luck as we come into the spring fishing season. Have a great day.